uh, I think you've uh, been clear about this, but I just want to make sure that uh, I've understood. Um, you would agree with the statement that climate change is caused, uh, or at least partially caused, by greenhouse gases, and that I think you said earlier most scientists agree that climate change is real. Is that true? That's true. Okay. Uh, Dr. Oppenheimer, um, you believe that climate is changing. I think that's a safe assumption based on your testimony, are there? Yes. Okay. Um, the majority posted a chart uh, earlier in this hearing that uh, showed by some models anyway, and we'll get to the, the reliability of those models in a second, but that though, by the end of 20, by the end of the century, that predicted, I believe it was a three degree centigrade change in global temperature. Can you color that a little bit for me? What does a three degree centigrade change in global climate temperature mean, Dr. Oppenheimer? Well, just to give you an example, already with uh, less than a one degree, and we're talking degrees Celsius yep. here, so double it roughly for Fahrenheit. With a change somewhat less than one degree Celsius, the uh, number of extremely hot days, and by the way, in uh, response to the last set of questions, one extreme that we're sure about that has increased are ext very hot days. Those are definitely increased. We have a lot of confidence in that. The number of such extremes, for instance, in a city like Washington, where a 90 degree day might be the, the, the hottest 10 percent of days, that, that, those number of days have already become global average. The 10 percent hottest days now represent 18 percent of days. And so we're moving to a hotter and hotter climate we, where we have more and more extremes. The sea level has been rising. Sea level has been rising primarily because Water expands when you heat it, and because ice is melting all so the time. So a three degrees change, centigrade change in global temperature, any rough prediction as to what that means for uh, sea level rise? Yeah, it means a sea level rise which IPCC reckons will be something between about a half a foot and three feet, I think a little more, almost a foot and three feet higher than today. And just to give you a rule of thumb, on an East Coast beach, one foot of vertical sea level rise takes away in erosion and submergence, typically 100 times as much land. There's one foot up this way, 100 feet inland go away, unless you spend a heck of a lot of money defending the beaches. Thank you, Doctor. Um, Dr. Buckin, um, your testimony, written testimony, um, you say that, um, uh, I think your point one is that um, we are living through a warming trend that is driven by a variety of influences. And in, uh, part three, you say, uh, has temperature been warming? Um, yes, we've been living through a warming trend, no doubt about that. In part five, you say, are greenhouse gases increasing? Yes, CO2, rapidly. Um, you go on to say in part three, change is normal on life, or change is normal life on Earth is inherently risky, it always has been. Doctor, do you look both ways before you cross the street? What is the relevance of that question? Uh, do you wear a seatbelt when you get in a car? Of course I do. So do you think it makes sense to mitigate against some of these changes that you indicate are in your own testimony are taking place? Uh, I think that we want... Yes or no, doctor? Yes or no? Yeah, yes or no. Okay, so restate the question. Do you think if you look both ways, if life is inherently risky, yet during the course of your daily activities you take steps to mitigate those risks, why would uh, something as, that could be as catastrophic as climate change could be, why would we not take mitigating steps? That's not a yes or no answer. You, there's so, no yes or no to that. That's would you not, suggest that we take mitigating steps or not? I, if we, that is we a yes should, or no. We, sh we should do adjustments. Mitigation so yes. is very unlikely to work. So uh, reducing carbon dioxide is unlikely to actually take place well. We I didn't, should I, adapt. So what other mitigating steps short of, if you're saying CO2 reduction isn't going to mitigate uh, climate change, what other mitigating steps would you suggest? No, I suggest that we uh, deal with the situation by reducing the, uh, going back to the major issues that face us. There are nine major environmental issues that affect us all the time and are much more damaging and much riskier to us than climate change. And I would be happy to give you those. And we need to focus on those. Okay. And if we focus on those, they're either neutral or beneficial to okay. the global warming So in concern. your opinion, Doctor, climate change is not one of the top nine greatest environmental changes we challenges we face? I have been working on climate change since 1968, 
And I think it is one of the problems we need to deal with, but we have to put it in its proper priority with those other nine. Sir, I've got eight seconds left. We should I'm ignore it. One question for Dr. Pelkey. Sir, you've said that humanity has had a significant effect on climate. Um, you've talked a little bit about whether the, the, the faith that we put in these models and the models, uh, but I think you said are also aren't working, and I think there's some question as to how reliable and how accurate these models are, conceitedly. Um, you mentioned in your written testimony that uh, the, uh, some of the National Weather Service funding and the models that have come, been created about that have had um, enormous social value. Um, do you think those, uh, investment in those types of models is a, is a good thing? Yes, I do. And I think the investment in predictability of climate models is also an excellent investment. That's so, different than providing understood, forecasts. Understood. So how would you categorize the decision to cut NOAA climate funding by 24 percent, which is what the appropriations bill that we'll be voting on this afternoon would do? I think there's an issue, what you're calling climate change, and there's climate. I'm just saying the study, the funding it's, it's, for that well, funding for... Mr. Kim, well, I can't, obviously can't answer that question unless I know exactly where the funding was going to. But if it was funding predictive models for decades in the future, I don't think that's a, a good use of funds. Thank you. Uh